And now, to the millions and millions of listeners and viewers all across the world, it's the That's Not Christian Podcast. Let's go. Let's go. Yo, 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 what up? It's your boy Switch. I'm here with your man Jimmy. I'm here with your boy right. Jay. And I'm here with your man Ant. And we have a very, very special guest, our homie from South Carolina, View Beats. What up? Yeah. Yo, welcome to the show, man. What's up, brother? What's going on, man? Good to be here for sure. For sure. No, I just no doubt. In the Switch recently in the uh, CHH chat. So. It's a really cool. I've been watching all his podcasts the past few days, and I oh, appreciate that everything and I like what's going on. Thank Dope, you, man. You, we appreciate you, you for up. coming out, man. Um, so yeah, man, what's been going on, fellas? How was y'all weekends? Any, anything interesting happened? Shh, weekend. Anything y'all want to talk about? Yo, I want to talk about that setup my guy has. Look at that. I wish our podcast looked like that. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy <laughs> for you guys that don't you know out there. Racks. View racks is on a, racks. View is an engineer, right? Right. Are you a producer as well? You make beats too, right? I started producing in like 2003. I've, I've been in music my whole life. And uh, I started producing like 2003. Then I started engineering in about 2004, 2005. Just working okay. with local rappers in my hometown and everything. And, uh, you know, progress from there. So producer, yeah. engineer, I, I spend more time mixing than I do producing. Um due to time you know so nice cool that's good we'll talk we'll we'll get into that a little later in the show but switch <laughs> you mentioned the weekend and i just remember i'm like i'm ready for lockdown part two well you are you ready to <laughs> get <laughs> vaccinated right wait you nah, ain't in lockdown whoa whoa whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. can't what wait kind of you talking right, about? what lockdown your wife got I mean, you locked down already <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, i mean yeah praise god facts <laughs> facts though what's wrong with that <laughs> Right, right, right. What's I'm wrong with that? Telling, man? I'm just telling hey. you, you're already locked down. So what hey. other lockdown you waiting for? Hey, hold up, hold up. Hold up. Did, did you guys have a tornado or something? A hurricane or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, I did have a warning, right? Well, one of y'all well, that was that was for the Bronx. No, nobody really cares about the Bronx. The wow. Bronx only the Bronx had a tornado warning, seriously. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't get anything. When when Switch mentioned it in our chat, I was like, that's weird. I checked my phone. Nothing. I saw it on the news this morning. You wasn't upstate, really? Switch. Yeah, I was upstate. My homie got it though. He sent me, he sent me the um the notification it was like oh take oh, cover this dude is you're fake in the area shots. he's like yeah. take cover you're in a fake area i mean oh, fake area you're in a, uh, a fake area a dangerous <laughs> area this guy he, he's talking about his fake warnings <laughs> so yeah they were like um you know it's a it's a a, a a warning in that area so he was it was like take cover make sure you know you're not outside and da, da, da. it came right on his phone a notification we what get that tornado off. They're gonna do to the Bronx, yo. All them buildings. Get rid of it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, the Bronx was still like we outside, right? <laughs> yeah, the, the Bronx was like you're. <laughs> was waiting. Yeah. Ain't doing nothing. Yeah. Now. I mean, that's pretty scary. I don't think I've, I've ever had a you know. Well, I don't think New York has ever had like a tornado scare like that before. I don't they know about you guys down south. I mean, that probably had. A, Oh, really? While, while you was here? Nah, but it was, I want to say maybe like 10 years ago where it went down like in Brooklyn. Um, not, I don't, oh man, like Bay Ridge area where it kind of like, it buckled yeah, the yeah. sidewalks, knocked some trees down. What? what? Wow, I don't remember yeah. that. Yeah. Wow. I remember that. We don't wow, yeah. kind of I mean, it didn't about, really do much to the houses though, but it did, mm. it did some damage. How about in South Carolina? You guys get uh, tornadoes or anything like that? Our weather down here is just crazy. Bipolar. So oh, we get really? and then when it gets cold and hot, we get a bunch of storms. Um, we had actually this, I've been in this house for a year and um, I think it was last, let's see, what is it, summer? I guess around this past spring, we had like five, 10 tornadoes, 10 miles wow. down the road from my house. Like Whoa. just wow. the highway and we're just, I'm just sitting on my front porch just watching the clouds go crazy. So, we get crazy weather down here for sure. That's crazy, Probably man. Jeez. See, I'm not about that life, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got now. Are you by Myrtle over there? Uh, uh, three hours from there. Oh, okay, okay. Do you go? Do you ever go out there? Yeah, I, I, I go. I go to Myrtle. My wife likes to go to Myrtle Beach. You know, there's some there's some nice parts down there, but uh, I like blue water. 
you know, if oh, I could blue water? or a beach, I like to go to some blue water, you know. Oh, okay. I never heard of that one, but the famous can, one is can, you know what's in the water? What? You know, like like Key West top water, like the the blue oh, water. Okay. Down the island. Oh, Until like like oh, Puerto Rico, okay, okay. like on the Until Gulf. Puerto Rico water. That Caribbean water. I don't like getting in the ocean when I can't see. <laughs> More like the murky waters. Yeah. Don't, That's don't like New York water swimming. every day. Yeah, don't ever go swimming in LA. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Jeez. All right, so that's what's up. What else? Me. What else? What else? What else? What's it? What else has been going on, fellas? Not much, oh. man. You know, Yo, my my, my guy. Hold on, I'm taking off my my headphones. But my guy, oh, dropped oh, another oh, album. On, you see this dude? Wow. You see this dude? He got to do all that. He really got to do all that. He can't wait to rap for Lecrae. This is sponsored I swear by. this dude is getting a bag, man. This ad yeah. is sponsored. Right, of your right. This ad is sponsored by 116. No, chill. No free brand deals. <laughs> We're just going to show the brand. No, so, um, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Lecrae re-released Restoration. Well, I don't want to say re-released. It was like a deluxe version yeah. um, of it. And he got, you know, like four or five new songs. Well, one song was already on the, play- on the summer playlist. And then the other ones, I guess, are new or whatever. Yeah. But I find so, it interesting. Why, four why songs? He, yeah, like four or five songs, I think it is. Mm-hmm. Um, com- you know, compared to the, I guess, the regular album. Right. Uh, but what you think? I mean, there was reports saying that, you know, it didn't really do that well. So, I mean, first is this album? something that, it, yeah, the, reg- the first uh, version of Restoration said it didn't Yeah, do I was it hearing well. that as well. Yeah. But it was uh, dope, though. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Huh? Who said that crew? I mean, probably. Probably <laughs> one of them. Yeah. Uh one, two, three, four, five. Six. Yeah, like six, six you songs. Know what was six dope? Songs. They did what? they had Rhapsody on it. Oh, I seen that. He did yeah. the deep end remix. She's, she's on it. Deep end. Is, is yeah. on it? Yeah. She bodied that verse. Yeah, she nice. Yeah. That song she did with Buster is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. She's nice. Um I didn't hear it, but, so I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, so I don't know. I kind of found it interesting that he would. I don't know, re- know if you know in the. I guess maybe if you and Switch, you you guys talk, you know, know about it more. But uh, for rappers or artists to release, I guess another you know album technically out into the to the world like that after the first one. I mean, first one was like maybe a month or two ago. Yeah, oh, yeah. pretty interesting. I don't, I don't think I really see that a whole lot if if anybody in the secular world it'd be like Rocco if y'all know who he is he's always doing some like you know well not really real releases but you got the like uh his was like word play one word play two you know stuff like that or I guess mixtape but yeah yeah. I don't know yeah but I've been seeing that a lot lately though like artists will do their album and then they'll re-release it as a deluxe Mm. oh yeah and then they'll put the features that they're I guess that people want it or maybe they feel like will cause more attention um because he just added about six more songs right and they right, were yeah. totally new songs um right and then he had what because in the last one he didn't have andy right he didn't have really no he didn't have that was, that was just on a playlist uh, mm-hmm. song he didn't have any 116 artists right i don't believe let me check i don't think he had any 116 artists uh on the original um one yeah the original mm-hmm. oh no 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 there was nobody uh yeah, there was no one 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 six, and then this one, he added all, all you know, he threw his one one six buddies in there. One day, Hovey. Yeah, Andy. All right. He got what, what up, RG. Yeah, what up, he RG. Got Ty, Ty Brazel. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's not one one six, I think. Um, he's okay. not. I he's thought an he affiliate. is. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. Or no, Ty yeah. isn't. What yeah, up, RG is Ty. though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about Ty. Yeah, but yo, it was dope. I like these. I like these additions. I like. Um, yeah. Did you hear I that like, beat on Ten Toes? Yeah. Oh my gosh! I want to know who produced that. That kid Hovi is nice, man. Oh yeah, he's cool. He's he nice. got he he got some hooks, man. Yeah. He, that that, that sure. boy is nice, man. Yeah. So yeah, man, we appreciate that album. That album's dope, man. For um, sure. For sure. You know, uh, especially now, like the craze been getting some backlash from a. Uh, uh-oh. Some some Trump uh-huh. supporters. <laughs> oh, is it Trump supporters or just like one main dude? Yeah? 
Oh, I think it's one just one. I think, I think it's one main dude, but there's a lot of other people that feel that, like that one main dude if you see the comments and stuff. Well, that's because they follow that dude. Yeah. Well, that so dude. so y'all that don't know, um, Marcus Rogers have recently... Uh, well, he, this isn't the first time as, as well. He's done this a few times where he's mentioned Lecrae. Uh, he's, I guess he feels like Lecrae isn't taking his stance when it comes to abortion. And maybe Why he's, he's singling too- Lecrae out, yo? Probably because he's such a public figure, especially claiming to be, you know, Christian. You know, he's, he's probably like, for me, I've only been into Christian hip hop for like, uh you know really the past two years mm. and really actually i've i've started working with a christian hip-hop artist two years ago and then um really started diving into christian hip-hop about a year ago year and a half ago okay. um, so before i've been a christian since i was like a, a true christian believe in god understood god since i was like 19 i'm 34 um but i was in the secular realm and so, but in the past few years, you know, people are like, oh, you should, you should um, record Christian hip hop. There's not a whole lot of Christian hip hop artists that I'd found. And every time someone would want to, would want to mention Christian hip hop is always Lecrae. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, oh, you, you heard of Lecrae? You're Christian, you heard of Lecrae? It's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I, I, I listened to him and everything, you know what I'm saying? And, and heard him, uh, I listened to him for a little bit at first when I started getting into the Christian hip hop. Right. We can get into that a little bit later too. Yeah. yeah so he's like, sure. he's like the face of a uh, CHH pretty much. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But that's why he's coming for, I mean, for force. Like, yeah. I mean, like we, we mentioned before with the crew, you know, we say that he's the most, I guess, successful, notable, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Notable, successful when it can't, when it comes to, you know, CHH. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's, True. he's, well, I mean, he's the one, He's the poster like, boy. Most, yeah, most likely, like when you talk about CHH, he's the one that you, you know, most likely you've heard of him because he's got songs with so many people, right? Mm-hmm. In the secular side, um, where there aren't too many Christian hip hop artists who are doing that, you know. But I'm gonna say Marcus is specifically targeting him, right? With a lot of the stuff. But Marcus being a Christian, he should know more Christian artists, or he would know. Why is he attacking Lacredo? Like, right. For the you know what I'm saying? For the clout. Oh. Well, that's what he, he said. He said he said he wasn't doing it for clicks or for I mean, that's um, what he said. views and stuff like that. Um, could I it saw, also be, yeah. Could it also be, you know, Cray has been vocal with his political stuff. And then, you know, he's meeting with like congressmen and presidents and all that stuff versus... Other but CHH artists? KB's been vocal about political stuff. Right. Nobody adding KB, huh? Yeah. Yeah, they have. Good point. Good point. I'm saying Marcus ain't. I mean, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Like Maybe he they, don't know There is other artists, huh? Maybe he don't know them like that. If he know the Cray, I'm sure he knows KB. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to ask him. Like, yo. <laughs> send <laughs> send to Adam. KB. Don't mean he's Adam. He might not be on the Lecrae, uh, uh, you know, Spotify radio, so he right. might. <laughs> <laughs> it, never, right. it don't come up on though. <laughs> you see, you see the 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 way my SEO is hooked up. You know what I mean? <laughs> KB just don't hit like that. Uh, yeah, you know what it is. <laughs> I don't yeah. know, man. Well, Marcus, what was, yeah, he been really going in on them, yeah. Yeah, what was weird to me was when he mentioned John Legend. He had a, oh, he had yeah. one video. And he was like, oh, uh, you know, John, uh, if if like basically saying, like, if you was really uh, about that life, why you ain't tell John Legend something and why he's not mad at you? You know, what I mean, and I'm like, what does John Legend have anything to do with this? Was and, he I know he, to, was and I know he he's saying the whole that pizza thing. Yeah, I think he's trying to bring up the whole Pizzagate thing. You think he's bringing up the whole Pizzagate thing or you think he's bringing up the fact that John is real supportive of, of oh, Biden, Democrats and Biden? Yeah. Yeah, because he was saying like, oh, you know, you know, your, your boy will be upset at you. Like he was quoting the scripture of the world is not going to accept you because you have Christ. Um, okay. So he was quoting that with that. But it was just really weird. Like, you 
like to me it was like do you even know what that relationship is like you know what i'm saying right. like all we ever heard really was a song from john legend and lecrae is there a real relationship there are they i like that song buddies too, are they that friends that song is dope so it was just really weird i think it was i think it was a little judgmental of him to uh overstep that boundary um Especially even with even with the whole Pizzagate stuff, whether it's true or not. Wait, but we assuming it's Pizzagate. It might not yeah, be. It might not be. It yeah. might not I, be. I asked. I uh... yeah, because like I'm saying, I because the the context, the way he was talking about it was like, because he was really focused on like, oh, how you support a candidate about abortions and you know what I'm saying Democrat. Yeah. So it could, like I'm saying, I'm thinking maybe it was more so because John Legend's been vocal. Him and his wife. Been yeah, him vocal. and his wife. Yeah about you know bashing trump you know what i mean so he probably was more you know talking about that because i mean when, that, if he, he starts talking pizza gay he's gonna sound crazy <laughs> I, I think too he's just kind of saying like you know like the the conforming to the world like um i, I see it me personally like um listening to lecrae um you know i was only like me personally i listened to him a couple songs when I was getting into the Christian hip hop. And then I had a spirit of discernment that kind of made me feel like, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I, it wasn't doing nothing for my spirit, wasn't doing anything to uplift me in Christ or anything like that to where um, I kind of just stopped listening to him. You know, I mean, I, just, I didn't pursue listening was, to Luke. Was, it, right. was this his newer stuff or his older stuff? Or? You know, year, two years ago. Yeah, I haven't, haven't really listened to him since, but I think that Marcus Rogers, what I what I've seen from him, I see how he's passionate, and I've watched some other preachers, like street preachers, like him. You know, what I'm saying that really preach um, repentance. You know, and and I think that's one thing that he's kind of getting at. And I'm, I'm, I guess he's not seeing Lecrae teach repentance or or you know preach repentance. I don't know. I don't know enough about Lecrae, and I don't follow him enough you know, for me to take sides or anything like that. Right. Yeah. To really speak on that. But from what I've seen from the Marcus Rogers and him talking about like with John Legend, um, you know, you're not going to say anything to offend your friends, John Legend. I see where he's coming at with Hollywood because Hollywood is on that side. You know what I'm saying? Most of Hollywood is, it's, it's, it's on that side. Um, and to me, it's not, uh, not on the side of the kingdom of God really. Yeah. Well, I mean, and this thing is, is like, where do we draw that balance, right? Where we're um, still, um, you know, being a light to the world inside that darkness, right? And also, where do we draw the line where we say, like, where we, where we, I mean, at the end of the day, we always have to preach repentance, right? Um, and that's vocally and also by our lifestyle, right? We have to show right. some kind of some some kind of fruit i just wonder like i just felt like it was a little uh judgmental because it was like you we don't know what that relationship is like you know what i'm saying where did you get this information from or you know did you just see the song with him and john legend and then you just said well he's cool with all john legend and that's his boy and we don't know you know that could have been a business transaction that could have just been like yo i really i really need a dope singer I want John Legend on it. You know what I mean? It probably wasn't even in the same room. Yeah. Right? yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Or it's, That's yo, true. I really appreciate John Legend. I always wanted John Legend and I got him on. And we don't know what he's doing in the background. Like, you know, we hear a lot of things. I mean, I'm always hearing about individuals preaching to secular artists. You know what I'm saying? That we don't hear in the public, but, and we don't see in the public, but it's happening. You know what I mean? There's people that still are, uh, ministering to these people so you know i just felt that was a little forward to him you know what i'm saying like and and let's let's also not expect that even if we preach to them that they're going to automatically repent you know what i'm saying because mm -hmm. right. that's another thing we we kind of think like well if you're around all these secular artists somebody got to repent well that's not always true you know what i'm saying not everyone is going to have an ear and and turn around you know what i mean but it might be the the manager that's managing the artist. It might be the producer. It might be the engineer, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, like yourself, um, view. You know what I mean? Where, you know, you hear the gospel and and it, and it affects your heart and you make a turn. So it's not always the stars that are 
uh, directly getting impacted. Sometimes it's the people around them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we just got to be careful how we, um, how we, I guess, how we uh, view things, <laughs> how we see things, because we don't know. We don't know what's going on behind closed doors. We don't know what kind of relationship Lecrae has. Um, I think someone, I, I, I forgot. I don't know if y'all, if y'all remember this. I think there was a secular artist. And he and he gave a vouch for Lecrae. He said, yo, Lecrae came out and Lecrae, you know, he was he said that basically he was like kind of trying to test Lecrae with something like that. There was a story that was floating around. I don't know if y'all remember that he was testing Lecrae and he he said, yo, this dude is solid. Like this dude is really about what he pre right. you know, what he talks about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was it T.I.? I don't nah. remember, man. I don't remember, but I remember that um. story. But the thing with, with Marcus, um, like the whole thing with him talking about Lecrae and 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 John Legend and all that, he I think he'd be reaching sometimes because he expect him, like you said, he expects him to conform John Legend or, or holler at him, like you say, he don't even know the relationship. But who's to say, you know what I'm saying, God, you know, because God uses folks, right? He, he uses people that aren't um I'm saved. So how do we know that wasn't, you know, ordained as far as him getting John Legend on that song? Because someone needed to hear that song. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like out to get that song out there. Cause the song um drowned, right? I mean, that, yeah. that song is dope. And you know, who John Legend's voice on that track. With what Lecrae speaking, I mean, them two together, who, you know, who's to say that song ain't touch folks? <laughs> right, right. Well, not not only that, like introduce people to to Lecrae's catalog, you know what I mean, and other artists, right? That are John think, Legend fans, right? That's what I'm saying. Like, or yeah. even just not John Legend's fans, but they just heard of John Legend and like, who's this cat? You know, throw him into Spotify. The next thing you you know you you're hearing everybody else who's attached to or who's associated with Lecrae, you know what I mean? Like Right, because think about else. it like this, and even if like Marcus Rogers or whatever, like you, you, he's worried about Lecrae not changing this one man, but doesn't realize how many people could have changed off of that one song. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You, you know, know when, I, when, I, when I saw that, I thought about that scripture um, when Christ was talking to the Pharisees, and I'm not calling Marcus Rogers a Pharisee at all, but um, I was thinking of that scripture where it said, "So he's a Sadducee." <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> oh, okay, I just want. I, nah, sure I, I just saying. thought about that scripture where Jesus said, um, "The tax collectors and the prostitutes will make it into the kingdom before, before Yahweh." Right, right. And that hit me so hard because it's like, you know, even if we look at John Legend, right, and what he stands for as the worst of the worst, right? Because the tax collectors back then. Those were the shadiest. A prostitute, yeah. it don't get no shadier than that. You Man, know I mean? IRS is still shady. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. true. Taxation <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but even with that, it's like, yo, even the 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 work, the, the way we view individuals, and Jesus is saying that they will enter the kingdom before, right? And obviously, because they will have a repentant heart and they will listen to the gospel and they'll believe on it, right? And and, and I just that's how I feel like, yo, like we are light to this world and we don't know, man. We don't know what's going to what's going to go down. We don't know right. you know, who we around and we might just touch somebody. How many times we got friends that they in the world and they call you all for prayer? That's facts, <laughs> man. That's facts. Mm. That's facts, bro. Oh, they want you to vent to you. Yo, uh, uh, Jimmy, man, yo, I've been going through this. I've been going through that. I need advice. How many times you got friends like that? That they come directly to you? They don't go to no one else. They don't go to their parents, their brother, no one else. But they know you are the individual that's going to pray for them, that's going to give them wise counsel. You know what I'm saying? Right. And we need people like that in the industry as well. You know what I'm saying? Especially now with all these rappers killing each other because they're rapping about their dead homies. <laughs> Yeah. We need, that's we need, real. We need that's those real, in the man. industry, man. I can, I can, I can speak on that in a little bit if you want to. Whenever I get to, uh, you know, we get to where I'm kind of talking about how I got into the Christian hip hop and left the secular world because um, I've seen a lot, you know, in the secular world. And and God, God literally spoke to me. I've heard the voice of God like 
three times in my life that wow one while i was awake and twice in dreams and it was the same voice you know and it led me and i followed and, and things changed you know for the better yeah. and um i guess i'll speak on a little bit one thing was I was down in, in the industry in Atlanta. That's where I was. I worked with TI, you know, everybody from TI, Yogati, been in parties with everybody like Diddy and, and all, you know, Jeezy. Dang. I recorded everybody. You know, I was always in the studios. We were going from the studios to clubs, the studios to clubs, the studios to right. clubs, 24 seven. You don't sleep, you take naps. You know, that's how it was. Wow. wow. And so the, the thing about it was, was um, my spirit wasn't filled the, you know, my spirit was empty. And, and I'm, I come from a, a family of Christians, family of ministers, family of missionaries, family of preachers, you know, like, but all, all loving agape love, you know what I'm saying? Grace, uh, no matter how much I screwed up in, in life, we love you. You know what I'm saying? That, that's right. what brought me back to God was that agape love. Um, and so, you know, I was down in Atlanta, man. I was just working my butt off. Everyone on Facebook, oh man, you made it. I was on TI's show. You know, oh, I see you on TV. You made it. <laughs> yeah, but you don't, no one knew what my spirit was going through. You know what right. I'm saying? I was actually more really spiritually being tormented because I was around so much evil um, when it comes to the music, you know, gangs, uh, gang members, you know. And I just kind of went along with the ride. You know what I'm saying? I'm riding around with people that, I trusted with my life, you know what I'm saying at the time, but, um, it was very spiritually demeaning and, uh, I was kind of depressed. I was asleep on the couch. I had this dream. I was, I was uh, living with my homeboy, big country, the TI's best friend. Mm -hmm. And I had this dream and it's the end of the world. And I was like in California and like this bomb hits and it comes and hit and this, this waves coming towards us. And all these people are outside and then all of a sudden they, they start running and I'm sitting there looking and running. It's like a nuclear wave coming towards us. And next thing you know, they stop and they turn around and they look in the sky and it's like, God had a keyboard and he typed, he's like, you only get one chance. That's that those words came up in the sky. You only get one chance. Wow. Everyone started chanting. You only get one chance. You only get one chance. And then the wave hit us and we die, you know? And so it, you know, normally when you you get hit in a dream or something, you wake up or you fall off a building, you wake up. Well, I didn't wake up and I went to where I'd been before and it's kind of like outer space. And the voice of God came to me and he said, you need to leave this place. He's like the people you're with, they don't have the same morals as you. They weren't raised like you. They don't want to know me. It's like, if you stay here, you will be trapped. He's wow. like, go home. I have something for you. And I woke up and I was just like, what i was like am i right. about to leave all of this everything i worked for you know i'd work i worked years to accomplish to get to where i was you know just to try to keep going and going and going being a, a bigger and bigger and bigger engineer engineer and producer in the industry and i just got on my knees started praying i was like god if that was you you gotta give me a sign whether it's verbal whether it's it's something move around here you make me feel something <laughs> all right God, i'm saying and I got quiet for about 30 seconds and, and about 30 seconds later, the same voice is like, like a reverse reverb comes in. like, uh, go, I just jump up, start packing my clothes. You know, I called my boy country. I was like, Hey bro, I, was, I, th I think I'm going back to North Carolina for a little bit. Oh yeah, bro. Go ahead. The album's done. You know, you're good. Go handle your business. There was no, there was no like, um, ah oh, man, you can't leave. Nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Nothing trying to hold me back. Mm. And, uh, so I left, left the industry and on the white ride home, I I kept thinking about that dream. And I remember God saying, if you stay here, you're going to be trapped. And, um, and trap music, you know what I'm saying? Uh, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and when I look at it, the people that were down there, I used to talk about God. And, and I used to ask people, you believe in God? You know what I'm saying? I ask country, you believe in God? Yeah, yeah, I believe in God. I believe in God. No one reads the Bible. You know what I'm saying? No one really talks about Jesus. You know, they believe in a higher being and all that stuff, kind of spiritual. Mm -hmm. And, um, but since I left there, you know, I've been blessed. I got a wife, house, car, you know, clothes, food, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everything on my own, right. without, you know, on anybody. Um, so yeah, you know, the, the whole, the one thing with the secular music and, and the people that were down there is I still see them is they, they are trapped in that lifestyle. You know, they literally are like going to the strip club. That's, that's breakfast. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. right. You go, oh, where's the studio? Hey, let's go to the club real quick. Go to the club, shoot T.I. Young Thug. They perform real quick. Okay, let's go back to the studio. Boom, go back to the studio. And, you know, it's just, that's just a normal life. 
Um, and it's, it's hard to reach people that are in that lifestyle, especially so deep into it. And it's like you said, uh, switch, like you might, I, I'd more likely reach a producer or engineer, someone who's trying to come up, you know what I'm saying? Like me and trying to make it more than reaching someone who is so far in the industry. They've got their riches. They got the people yeah. around them. They got the industry around them telling them like, nah, don't listen to that kid. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he's just mad. He ain't us. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. right. Mm. Fire you the next day. Exactly, exactly, and that's how it is. So it's it's hard to reach uh, people once, they, especially once they've made it to a certain level, because they don't want to be reached. Mm. Yeah, and they got to sustain that lifestyle too, because yeah. the last thing they want to do is give it give all up. up. Everything. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. It's like that yeah. rich man, right? Who right. Jesus asked to sell his possessions and come follow him, and he was like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like huh? "What? It's easier for a camel to go through a eye of a needle, right?" Mm, yeah. yeah yeah that's nuts that's so crazy. so what what so in that transition of you what like you you mentioned you finished an album for somebody and then it was like okay god spoke to you and then you was out so before that um during the making of the album and all this other stuff like what was the wrestle like like what was like was this something that uh was occurring once that particular album was finished or throughout that whole process, you were just like, you know what? I, I, I need to do something like this doesn't feel right. This is, you know, so maybe you could touch a little on that. I mean, it's almost like I can, I can definitely like feel a difference between now and then, you know what I'm saying? Like with what I'm doing now compared to then the wrestle was, was constant. Like, um, just like I'm missing something, you know, like I believed in God. I knew, I knew God, but I say most of the time when I was down there in the industry, I wasn't reading my Bible because I wasn't around others who were, I wasn't being encouraged to read my Bible. Right. You know, I believed in Jesus. You know, I believed in God. I, I wasn't into it. I wasn't going to church. So it's more of a, um, like an inner struggle. Like, and then I, I always felt like I didn't fit in, you know what I'm saying? I was white, you know what I'm saying? I was like one of the only white people other than like, my home, like T.I.'s, his uh, head engineer, Elliot, a good friend of mine. You know, he's he's uh, he's white and everything. But I I was running around with everybody. But and and just to be blatantly honest here, like I wasn't making no money. You know what I'm saying? I'm working with some of the some of these big artists. I'm getting a hundred dollars every couple of days or so. Oh, here, here you go, view hundred dollar bill. Like, what am I supposed to do with that? You know, I just worked wow. for hours straight. You know, and and so I was wrestling with finances that's one thing, but then just like spiritually, like going to the strip clubs and just realizing how, how much it was like, just like normal feeling for everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Like that was the last, I felt like, man, I just don't feel like I'm supposed to be here. You know, I just feeling like this. I'm just, that's that conviction, right? What's that? What's that Jimmy? I said, that's that conviction, right? That's that Holy spirit working on you. Yeah. and, And, and so, um, yeah, and I went through years of that, you know what I'm saying? That conviction and just not being fulfilled. And it just started wearing on me, wearing on me, wearing on me till I got into a state of depression. And then mm-hmm. while people are telling me, oh, you, you made it, you made it. It's like, yo, I am depressed. Like, out mm-hmm. of right. depressed. And, and so it was, a, a, yeah, it was definitely a wrestle. Did now, you think about it? Did you, sorry, Switch. Did you think about it twice? Um when you heard, you know, God say, okay, just go, just go. I know you mentioned you packed up your stuff, you know, but was there like a little lapse? You were like, man, should I really, really leave all of this? When when, when I woke up from the dream, there, there was a wrestle there because I'm like, okay, maybe I'm just dreaming. You know what I'm saying? Even though I know I've heard that voice before, like right. maybe. It could have been, it could have been eating hot wings so late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, right? <laughs> it's a little indigestion. Yeah. And so I, that's why I got on my, I literally like, got on my knees and prayed like no one happened to be home at the time it was just quiet and uh i just was like god you know you got to give me a sign because if not i'm staying so there was a wrestle but once he's once i verbally heard that whether it was my conscious or whatever it was right heard it clear as day go I was, don't tell us. I'm <laughs> so literally right. that instant that instant you you was out packed my, packed my bag threw it in the car called country i'm going to work i was wow. on was gone and I, wow. I never went to Atlanta since and that wow, was wow. 2014 2015 wow. so dope. so um you had mentioned earlier that you came to Christ when you were 19 right mm-hmm. yeah so were you 
were you like on and off with with God and stuff like that? Was it like yeah, it's like um was it like oh I just said this in his prayer just to say it? And <laughs> <laughs> so so the, hearing the voice of God um all through high school um I started doing drugs in like tenth grade you know started smoking weed started smoking weed in like eighth grade but then I started drinking got into ecstasy you know shrooms LSD like you know just partying partied all through high school. I uh, went five years because so I quit one year. After I graduated, um, you know, I was on some pretty hard drugs. All my friends were, you know, my whole town almost, all my friends were. And so I knew that, I guess it was that summer, I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, yo, this is not who I'm supposed to be. I looked terrible. You know, my face was sunken in. I mean, I was I was bad. I was bad off. I was a drug addict. You know what I'm saying? And uh, right. I knew that's not who I wanted to be. I knew that I was better than that. You know, I knew that I like, like God had, I, I just knew inside, like, this ain't who I was raised to be. Even though I come from a, a you know, single mother household, three kids, you know, it wasn't easy. And so I did the w- one thing I only knew to do. And that was, uh, I thought about my grandparents, the God they love. And I just went to uh, my mom's house, went to the basement. I had a bed, locked myself in the room and opened the Bible. And I was like, it's the only thing I knew to do, you know, and uh, started reading the Bible you know, at night I would go through withdrawals. I was seeing demons in the corners of my eyes, you know, shadows, seeing little shadows. I was paranoid. Um, I was hearing voices and oh, I just go get some, you know, just, just go get something, go get something. It don't matter what it is. Just go get it. Go get some drugs. You know, you want it. You'll be okay. That's what I was hearing in, in my conscience. Wow. So I kept reading the Bible, you know, about went through about three, four nights of uh, withdrawals. And um, on the, I guess I think it's like the fourth or fifth like day. I don't know what time it was. I'm reading the Bible and I get to the Sermon on the Mount and I just happened to turn on the TV and the, the old school Jesus movie was on, you know what I'm saying? Where he's, you know, yeah. literally you're, you're, they're reading the Bible to you, you know, but it's the old school Jesus and it gets to the Sermon on the Mount. So I'm reading the Sermon on the Mount and I'm watching the Sermon on the Mount. I'm like, Oh, this is crazy. I'm like reading it. I'm seeing it. So I was like feeling it. And I literally like just like paralyzed, went into like a, a fetus position and a uh, fetal position. Wow and had an out-of-body experience, I seen myself laying there on my bed. And um, I seen like a bright blue light just leave my body. And and I thought I died, you know, I was like, oh, I'm dead. You know, I'm sitting there looking at myself, I'm dead. And the bright blue light goes up. It's like the outline of a hand going up. And I just see like outer space, stars, universes, and it's just going up, going up, going up. And I'm, you know, I'm completely sober at the time. Um, uh, I don't know how else to explain it, but it, it was very real. Next thing you know, this this white white hand, the outline of a hand, it's like bright white, comes and just grabs mine, and it's like psh, like the best feeling I've ever had. You know, like better than any trip, better than any drug. Mm. That's when the voice of God came to me, and He's like, "You called on me. I'm here. You know, you you turned your back on me. I never turned my back on you. I've always been here waiting for you. You're saved. You're healed. You're clean. No more addiction." And I'm, I know he said a lot more than that, um, but that's all the stuff I really remember. And um, he said, um, you know, I'll always be here. And so I come back in my body. I mean, it felt like I was there for like forever. Come back in my body. I'm still curled up. I can't break free. I finally break free. I start crying. You know, I cry myself to sleep. Woke up the next day and, um, you know, I'm trying to think like, yo, am I crazy? Like, did that really just happen? Like, is this real? Like, so I'm just waiting to hear the voices to tell me, go get a hit. Waiting to, to feel like I, that, that anxiety feeling that I need some drugs. You know what I'm saying? I sit up and I'm like, nothing. You know, I don't see no shadows. I'm not, I'm not no, no feeling of addiction. And uh, I felt cleaner than I ever felt. Like 100% clean, pure. You know, I was like, yo, like, I've never felt this way before. And from that point, like, how can I deny God ever, you know? So no matter from that point, you know, um, that was towards the beginning um, of me getting into the music industry. So I started, I went to, ended up going to college, community college for piano and and, uh, vocal lessons. And that led me to meeting certain people that started a record label in my hometown and uh, pursuing the rap career, you know, recording rappers and everything like that. But even, even though my backslides throughout the time, I, I always knew God was there. Cause how can I deny what happened to me? Right. Right. And, and so, so yeah. Wow. 
It's crazy. It's, it's so, amazing. So, it's so amazing. you, so you were, you were going to, you started going to school and then that's how you got into the engineering. Um, yeah, kind of like I, I've always been into music and I've always been into computers. So I did computer networking and engineering in high school. That's the one good thing I did in high school, you know, <laughs> I love computers. I was building them networking. I helped build the school network and everything. I was always good with it. And then I was always, I played trumpet, played piano, guitar. I was always into music. So I just kind of put the two together. The community college I went to didn't have no engineering. They just had piano, vocals, uh, music theory. So I was learning kind of the classical music side there. But then I met my homeboy Rabbit um, while while going to school. And he's like, yo, he was older. He wanted to start a rap record label. He knew rappers. I was like, well, I make beats. So we started a little label. And he's like, I was an engineer. He was the businessman. And, uh, oh, nice. and so we, you know, everything I learned that was back in like Oh five. So there wasn't really YouTube, you know, if I wanted to learn compression or EQ, I go to the, the Barnes and Nobles and pick up a book and read it, go back right. and, apply it, you know, and so just kept learning from there. Wow. So you had gotten so, uh, so talented that the, uh, the big names wanted to mess with you, huh? <laughs> It's, it's, it's what's really wild is my boy Rabbit. So my boy Rabbit, he he was killed back in 2009 by his own cousin. You know, it's pretty. Oh, sorry cool. to hear that. Oh, jeez. It's, it's pretty crazy. Um, she's female, stabbed him with a knife. She was crazy. He was beating her oh, wow. to stop her. So that put a damper. But when he was alive, he used to he used to mess. You know, kind of like he 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 was like a, a drill sergeant towards me. He was always like, "Where you at? We got work to do." You know, where he had a real New York vibe to him. So he's like, "Where you at?" Yeah, you know, he's very fast and let's, let's go, let's go, let's go. And so he was always on me. Um, if I wasn't at the studio, he won't know where I was and why am I not at the studio, you know, and, and which I appreciate that now. Um, but he used to say, uh, you know, one day, one day you're going to work with, you're going to, you're going to work with TI. Just want you to know that, you know, one day you're going to like, Yo, you're crazy. You're crazy. You know? And, uh, Next thing you know, I'm working with TI, <laughs> you know? Uh, so did you, w w during that process, like, did you think you would get, I, uh, that opportunity to work with these artists like was that a goal of yours like to get so good yeah yeah it was always yeah. it was like like ti in the south you know king of the south mm -hmm. so he yeah, yeah. he was huge in hickory where i'm from hickory north carolina i mean he if you were ti was the biggest artist back then you know yeah. rapper as far as respected in the south you know if, if you were ti you're with you're with the boss and so, yeah, the goal was always T.I. I'm going to get T.I. on a beat. You know, I'm going to record T.I. one day. Yeah, so that that was, uh, I mean, it's pretty wild that it ever did happen because of of who T.I. is to the South, you know, and, and, and the, the culture down there. Yeah, he calls himself the king, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's, oh, he's extremely talented, you know, and, and uh, T.I. was always real respectful, you know, to me and everything. So I, I have nothing bad to say about T.I., um, you know, he's in the secular world. He's on that side. Um, but he was always real respectful. Um, most people I was around was real respectful toward me other than like, you know, financially, <laughs> you know, oh, right, right. I mean, you get paid a hundred bucks. We'll go to the strip club and I'll see somebody blow $10,000, you know, right, like, right, <laughs> that's right. crazy. Yeah. So uh, tell, tell us how does, how does a dude from Hickory, right? get in contact with TI and be like, yo, I'm a, I'm an engineer for you. Like, how does that walk us through that? How does that happen, man? So, so I just so happened to grow up with big country King's brother. His name's Trump. Um, he's from Hickory. Okay. So him, him and country got the same dad. So I, after rabbit died, I was kind of, um, I took a couple months off, you know what I'm saying? Right. Shed my tears and then, uh, had a couple of dreams and, and was told to, to open a studio. So I opened another studio in Hickory and I started working with like, in a, you know, a couple of little clients here and there's not, there's not any money in Hickory really. So I wasn't making much, but the artist that I was working with with rabbit started coming back around and we started recording. Well, they, they, they would just started getting disrespectful. I tell them, yo, yo, don't smoke no cigarettes in my studio. You know, you don't smoke weed. That's cool. But no cigarettes. And they saying, you know, they're smoking cigarettes, you know, they, they just started getting more and more disrespectful. I'm like, yo, I ain't got to put up with this. Like, yo, yo F Hickory. You know, I'm out. <laughs> right. I packed everything up and um, I started couch surfing for a little bit so I could figure out what I was going to do. Found out I had a, a great uncle who lived in Atlanta. I emailed him and uh, he's like, yeah, come on down. So I moved in with him 
Trump found out I moved to Atlanta. He's like, yo, my brother just got a new house. He needs an engineer. Let me wow. link you. So boom, boom. They saying, you know, I'm at big country's house working with him. T.I. is in prison at this time. And uh, so, so, you know, I was around everyone who was around T.I., but T.I. wasn't there. Right. Wow. Um, you know, I just put in the work. And then once T.I. got out, country being one of his best friends, you know, we ended up being around him all the time. And uh, it just led from that, you know, to where there was times where, uh, I mean, I was in the studio with him quite a bit. But if Elliot, you know, wanted to get up and, and hey, view you good. Yeah, I'm good. OK, go ahead. And, you know, I sit there and just record the track. And, uh, you know, just went from there, got a couple, got a, got a couple beats. He got on a couple beats. They never really was released on an album or anything like that. So the thing about TI, he probably records like, uh, like 20 to 50 songs a week. Wow. Like, wow. Non- 20. Yeah. Like there's, there were times I, I'd say, I'd say like, I'd say average it's like 20 songs a week on, on whenever he's like, like on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, no, he'll, he'll buy, he'll book out three studios at a time. Like we'd be at, we'd have tree sound studios. We'd have patchworks. We'd have, um, dark, which was Dallas Austin studio. And that way, you know, hustle gang, he'd have like, um, like some artists in this studio, some artists in this studio, he'd be in this studio and they just circulate, you know, just. So his work ethic was there. (laughs) Oh, that's, I mean, the, the, that's why that's why he's so good is because he's always in the studio, always. Yeah. It's like, so now with these songs, right, like these artists, a lot of times they they do all these songs. Right. And then they just handpick the best ones. Right. Because a lot of them are just like, nah, nobody wants to hear that. Right. <laughs> with him, it's a different story. He, he, he definitely he, he, He's definitely talented. He's got a lot of, he had a lot of really good songs that I was like, oh man, I can't wait to hear this come out. You know, at the time, you know, I was into that music and everything. Um, everybody else, I mean, yeah, you know, definitely. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of, a lot of that music that just sounds like the same old thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> same old thing over and over and over again. But, but yeah. for him, yeah, I mean, he's got, he got so much music. It's crazy. It really is crazy. So did you, did you ever, uh, end up getting like compensated or like rewarded for your stuff eventually or basically my reward was considered i'm lucky to be there you know what i'm saying i did i got to go on tour with them you know with them a couple of times we we'll travel with them and everything like that um so the reward was kind of like you know um I, I remember i remember being told it wasn't tip that told me this um but some i remember one time i said something like yo like am i gonna get paid <laughs> You ain't happy to be here? It's like, you know, you got a hundred other people over here that wish they were in your position. Wow. You gonna do your job or what? It's like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm, I'm gonna do my job. Do my job. Free labor, huh? <laughs> wow. That industry is with a lot of those, uh, a lot of uh, industry artists, you know, once they make it, like they don't, I mean, it just seems like they feel, I'm not gonna speak for them and say they don't, but it just seems like they feel like they don't need to pay anybody because there's plenty of people who would do the work for them for free. Standing in line, right, right. Did you did you get uh, album credits and stuff like that? Never got any album credits. I, I mixed some of GDOD2, um, recorded some of GDOD2, um, you know, con- country country would shout me out, you know, country would give me some credit here and there, um, yeah. give me credit on some of his tapes and stuff like that, but never anything uh, album-wise. Wow. wow. They would usually pay, usually Ray C. I don't know if y'all ever heard of Ray C. He's, he's like the main mixing engineer. Mm-hmm. The most stuff, even if it got mixed in house would get sent. Like if it's, if it's, if it's dropping album, it's going to get sent to like Ray C, someone like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got it. Super major. Wow. So, so now, go ahead. Switch. No, no, you got it. No, I was going to say, well, you, if you're going to keep them in this side, the TI side, your question was regarding that mm-hmm. nah. switch. Nah. Um, I well, we, I was gonna say I was gonna ask. Um, so now you 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 you're dealing with that. You're on that side. You get your dream. You're out. What's your next step? Because you know you're you uh. What are you gonna do? Like that was that's that's what you've been doing. How did you? How was that transition from you? You know to go from from that side to you know to come in, You know having that wrestle with christ yeah and so so w- once i left like um i come up with the Charlotte. I, I mean i had a good relationship in charlotte at that time already i'd been back and forth with charlotte from charlotte to atlanta 
So um, at the time, King Carter, who was the baby's manager, um, he was a rapper at the time. And so I knew he had a studio. I hit him up. We were, we were pretty close friends and everything. We became, you know, closer friends. And he pretty much let me like almost live in his studio, you know, like, uh, you know, at the time I, he's let me bring my clients there. You know, I had mad clientele from working with tip. So, you know, a lot of right. in- artists want to work with me. So I was, I was able to start making money, get a car and, um, work my way up in Charlotte. So I, I was still kind of, I was still working with secular artists is just independent from that point. My, my goal from that time, was okay, you know what, I'm done with the industry. I'm just going to, I'm going to help independent artists get that industry sound. Right. That's what I did for a while. Um, worked at his studio, uh, ended up working at a couple other really, really awesome studios in Charlotte. Um, just helping independent artists and, uh, just to fast forward to get to, um, now, about two years ago, one of my home, I DJ too. So I was DJing in clubs and stuff like that, DJing bars. And one of my homeboys at DJ, he's like, bro, um, you know, I, I've never been, I've never been ashamed to say I'm a Christian or to anybody, you know, or, or talk about it. And one of my friends is like, yo, bro, he's like, you got to meet this, my homeboy, man, he's a Christian rapper. I'm like, oh Lord, you know, like Christian rapper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I've never, I had never at the time, listen to Christian rap, you know what I'm saying? Or, or heard anyone locally who was a Christian rapper right. to any of the studios. So I'm like, you know, okay, well, you know, yeah, yeah, cool. I'll meet him. You know, a couple months go by. He's like, nah, bro. Like, listen, bro, I'm telling you, you got to meet my boy. I was like, all right, well, look, just, just bring him. And I had been praying, you know, I've been, I've been praying to God for a couple of years, actually. Like, God, I'm like, why can I not use my talents to glorify you? You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm glorifying like the kingdom of evil, like nonstop. <laughs> like, right. why can I not use these talents to glorify you? That's what I want to do. And um, so he brings his boy and his, his name's Diamond. And I'm sure if you, if you guys have seen the Hog Mob, yeah. uh, Diamond, he's, he's with them. So I, it was, this was before he was with Hog Mob. So Diamond comes to the studio. Um, we probably talk for an hour before we even record. You know, he hears some of my story. I hear his. I'm like, okay, okay. He gets in and starts rapping. I'm like, yo, this dude's dope. I was like, he's like, man, I told you, man. You told you need to meet him. And so uh, he's like, yeah, man. He's like, I rock with you. I want you to be my engineer. Um, you know, he's got that deep voice. He's like, yeah, I want to, no, I want to rock with you. And, and his his main thing was he wanted a Christian engineer. He wanted his whole team to be, you know, on the with on the kingdom side. And so uh, we started working together. That's when I started learning about Christian hip hop. Really, was through him. Um, you know, he, he's got a crazy story too. a uh, crazy, crazy story. Um, but anyways, he started telling me about like seven, you know, he's like, yeah, you know, but what you got, you got here, seven, uh, seven dudes, seven, seven dudes was kind of his favorite. And so I was like, okay, I'll check him out and get on Spotify. I start listening to him. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Yo, these dudes are dope. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even know yeah. this music even existed. And, um, so then he's like, tell me, you know, tell me about Brian T. So I started listening to Brian T, you know, and I'm like, right. Me being who I am, I network, you know what I'm saying? I'm always about networking. When I was selling drugs in high school, I was networking, you know what I'm saying? When I got (laughs) the industry, I was networking. I've been to networking classes. I've been to seminars, you know, so I'm all about business and networking. So um, I was like, you know what? These dudes can't be that hard to get in touch with. I was like, you know what I'm saying? Let me, let me get on Instagram. I get on Instagram, look up seven dudes. I hit them up like, Hey, I'm recording this dude named Diamond. Uh, he, he wants to rock with you. you know, what do we got to do for a feature? He hits me like, send me something. So I send him something and he, uh, he ends up calling Diamond and then he ends up calling me and he, he's just like filling us out. You know what I'm saying? He calls, calls this thing about dudes. He's like, I, he doesn't just want to do a feature. He wants to make sure you're about it. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to, someone paying for a feature. Now he's on this crazy secular artist out. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so he, he was about and heard our stories. And, and so they they did two features and then um, he led us to Hurt. And then so Diamond did uh, two features with Hurt. And then Seven uh, introduced, Deuce introduced us to Brian T. So we did two features with Brian T. And then uh, I started hitting up Brian T. And I, I produced a song on his uh, Live and Grow song, uh, album called uh, Free Will. And then I, I mixed uh, another song on that album. And so we, we built a little relationship there, you know? And um, so then uh, Diamond re- started doing the, uh, started doing um, uh, discipleship with Hog Mob. Started, you know, doing like uh, their Bible studies and stuff like that. And really got built a relationship with Seven. And, um, you know, 
Don would call me one night. He's like, bro, man, you know, Seven's rocking with you, man. He likes your mixes, man. He's like, you know, he, he said he's rocking with you. And, and he kind of told Seven my story. And, but, but to back up a little bit, um, in the midst of that, before, before Seven and them really got involved, like I was still DJing in the world. I was still recording secular independent artists, you know, uh, making money, you know what I'm saying? And, and hustling. And, um, I kind of started slacking on diamond. I started slacking on his album because like, Hey, do, if you want to, can I get in there tonight? Uh, bro, I got another session tonight. Oh, what's up Saturday. Um, DJ and Saturday, he sat me down one day. He's like, look, bro. And this is, this is being very calm to how he came at me. He was like, look, man, I, I, <laughs> I'm going to be done by now. You know, my reason, the reason my album's not done is because of you, you know, you, you're, you're DJing out here in, uh, in Satan's playground. You know, you're playing all this music for people to get drunk to, you know, you're recording these artists talking about killing and, and drug dealing and, and, and all the stuff, you know, we're not about. And he's like, that's cool. I'm not telling you what to do, but you know, you know, you want to make your money, you can make your money, but this is my ministry and you're holding my ministry back. And he's like, I, I have to find somebody else, bro. He's like, as much as I don't want to, you know, I love you. I love who you are. I know you're about it, but bro, I've got to get this music on the road because this is my ministry. Mm. And I mean, it was a lot louder than that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, I was like, Slap in the face. Yeah. I mean, I, I knew it though. I knew it. You know what I'm saying? I knew it. So I got up and uh, I was like, I'll be right back. I walked out of the studio, I walked in the, the front of the, the office space. I just sat there and I started praying. And I was just like, God, he's right. You know, I mean, he's absolutely right. I can't deny that. And uh, I just kind of got silent and just sat in prayer. And, and God was just like, you're going to have to show him. You can't tell him, you know, you're going to show him that you're, that you're going to change. You can't, words ain't going to matter. Mm-hmm. So I come back in the room and I was like, sat down. I was like, bro, you're right. And he was, he was like, what, what, you know, like, whoa. <laughs> And I told him, I said, bros, I can't, I can't, sh- I can't tell you with words that, you know, I'm going to be here for you and we're going to get this done. I said, I'm, I'm going to have to show you with action. So we'll just have to move forward from here. I had a DJ gig that weekend. I canceled it. Um, I canceled all my sessions. And from that point, I stopped recording secular artists, you know, stopped recording secular hip hop, secular rap, um, stopped DJing clubs, bars. Uh, I was only DJing like top golf and I do weddings, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So, um, so yeah, he, he ended up telling seven that story, you know, um, once seven started getting more involved with us and seven was like, yo, res-, you know, he respected that. And uh, next thing you know, um, I finished Diamond's album and uh, we get, we get to the point where like, I went about two months after I quit recording secular artists. I mean, I cut out like, you know, I cut out like, forty thousand dollars a year you know mm. just gave it up and that was not easy especially no. once i finished diamond's album i didn't have anything to do i'm literally sitting here with no music to mix you know what i'm saying i don't know any other christian hip-hop artists or anything you know i'm like uh, and then covid hits so i'm quarantined but no music to mix that's when I ended up producing. I produced a little album that I put on Spotify of just like low five beats, you know, me just chilling, making beats. But I started going crazy. And um, yo, what's the name of that album, man? I listened to Lo-Fi in the office. Yeah, we got to check that out. Oh, uh, it's not now when view beats. It's not now when. Okay. Yeah, seven songs, seven, seven beats. Um, So, you know, I started getting a little depressed and a little discouraged, you know what I'm saying? Almost started backsliding like, yo, like, you know what I mean? It ain't gonna hurt if I go make you know a couple thousand dollars real quick, just record a couple people. But in my my spirit, I knew like, nah, I can't do that. And the next thing you know, um, I prayed about it. Like a day or two later, Diamond called me, view, bro, you ain't gonna believe this, man. Yo, Seven's bringing Hall Mob to Charlotte. They're recording the whole album with you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, bro, he said he bringing the whole mob. <laughs> he said, bro, and then like two days later, he's like, bro. Yo, Seven wants you to mix the album. I was like, oh, nice. man, what? I'm like, this is dope. You know, like finally. So they they came in like September. And that just like really helped me with with my encouragement of uh, just being in music. You know, oh, so that was just recently. Yeah, that right. was the, the, the Mob Millennium. So I've been oh, I'm still, okay, okay. still working on that album, uh, you know, right now. So as they're dropping, I'm still mixing. Yeah. Songs and everything. 
Um, wow. Yeah, yeah that, that that's 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 what that's right when I heard about Diamond. Like I had never heard of him before up until yeah. un, until this project right here that you worked on. That's right. right. Yeah. He was in the secular music too. I mean, he's he's a little older too. Um he's from Texas? No, he's from uh, Miami. Okay. Um, but he, he was like a, you know, he's like a white gangster. He was a gangster in Jamaica, like the only white gangster in Jamaica. There's like stories about him. Um, he was with very gang affiliated in uh, Miami. I mean, he's got a really, really crazy story. So you can, you can see where he fits in with Hog Mob. You right. Know? Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yo, he, his, his last verse on the, well, well, not his last verse, excuse me. The last song that, that they put, that they put out or, or someone put the, the link on. Um, Which one? H-O-G-M-O-B. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, H-O-G. Christ yeah. gang, Christ gang. Yeah. yeah. yeah with it, that's the one where they in the van, right? Yeah. With yeah. The yeah. With Zadok, yeah. With Zadok and Fawns Carter. Yeah. So, Diamond Bible. murdered that joint. Yeah, yeah. Diamond's crazy, man. Like, that's, like, seven, seven was rocking with him, you know what I'm saying? And um, you're definitely going to hear a lot more of Diamond on this album. Um. But uh, the beam on the Bible. So when we was recording uh, Diamond's album, when I was doing his album, we were sh- I shot a couple of videos um, with him or a couple. I did a couple of photo shoots and he had the beam on the Bible. You know, so we got some pretty good. That, that was kind of his concept, that beam on the Bible, you know. And right. uh, so he's definitely been incorporating that. But, yeah, he's, he's very, very talented and very, very passionate. So. So are you uh, trying to reach out to other uh, CHH artists right oh, yeah. now? Like, really, man. Yes. I'm, I'm, uh, I mean, my goal, my goal is to be able to, um, you know, get back into working full time on music because once, you know, giving up secular, I mean, uh, um, I rely on a full time job, you know what I'm saying? To pay my bills. Right. Uh, where, you know, DJing and, um, weddings obviously helps with that. But I mean, I love my passion is mixing. I've been doing it for so long, you know, mixing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm getting deeper into mastering as well. I'm pretty good at doing that. I mean, I'm, I'm doing the mix and masters on these. Um, I'm also learning the new industry standard with, with streaming. There's a whole lot of new industry standards with streaming and music. Um, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely looking to network with other CHH artists. And so you're the guy to go to. Y'all hear everybody that's listening. Go to my man, View Beats. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll run your music through some analog here. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, <laughs> you um, see all that equipment there. That boy ain't playing, man. So yeah. where you recording? You record at your own crib or? or? In the crib now. Um, this, is, this is where I mix at. I mix here in the crib. Um, I got a studio right down the road uh, that I record at. My One of my partners, he owns it. Um, it's a very nice studio and everything. So we record there. And then I, I usually do mixing here. I got a baby on the way. So I like to be at home. Hey, yeah, yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. December, yeah. right? Yeah, December. Yeah, Titus. Nice. Uh, what? What is? Any, what, what you said? Titus. Titus. Oh, yes. nice. nice. You got the name already. <laughs> nice. That's a sub. I got a question of you. Where yeah. does View Beats name come from? That's a good question. Um, so I'm from Hickory, North Carolina, which is a there's a it's kind of sectioned off, and one of the sections is called Longview. So I'm from Longview, and so growing up, it's a pretty rough. It's just nothing happens in Longview. You know what I'm saying? You either uh my group of friends, you either end up in jail, dead, or a drug addict, you know? And so... Uh, so it's like a small town, right? Small town. And so I ended up, you know, being one of the people, like only one of the only people who ever did something like big, I guess you could say. But as I'm coming up doing music there, people just started calling me View because I'm from Longview, you know? So everybody in the hood, okay. like, oh, he's from Longview. A view, View, what up, View? Oh, you know, so then it got to be like a bunch of different words, like different different names and then i end up like okay view beats that's perfect you know what i'm saying and so that was like my oh five so yeah he's still repping the <laughs> set yeah. the city. I like that. I like that. so how do you so view go out my best what's good how do you how do you feel about the quality in chh like from the <laughs> other artists that's that a good you, question too that is a good question there is because a lot of people before would be like oh this is corny even even view earlier he was like oh christian hip-hop i don't know <laughs> yeah, what this right. is about you know yeah i mean yeah. It, it's funny. I'm not the only. I've, I've mentioned. I don't. It's, I don't know how recently, but I've mentioned before. I am working with Christian hip hop. Christian hip hop. You know, like there's Christian hip hop. You know, so I'm not the only one who doesn't know. Anything. But um, I've I've recently been coming across some more and more people. Um, a lot of times I'll have it just like I'll be working in the garage or something or, or working on the house, and um, 
I'll just have like a playlist playing like a, you know, put on one of seven songs and let a radio go or Brian T and I'll hear, start hearing, you know, different, I'll hear some songs I like and I don't go over my phone to see who it was, you know? So I'm hearing some people I'm like, dang, I wish I would have liked that song. Right. I just, uh, I just listened to uh Dayton. Is that his name? Dayton? Yeah. 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 So I was listening to, I had it on a, a Christian hip hop Spotify and that song snot rag came up. I don't know if y'all heard that song snot rag. No, nah, I heard that one. No, that song, mm-hmm. no man. Be I'm, I'm from the south. It's on the CHH Ain't Dead album. I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had to walk over my phone and like, yo, I got like, who is it? <laughs> and I, it wasn't him. That I like the hook. The hook on it. It's very uh, south sounding, and yeah, I think it's Swayze, that that young eighteen year old Swayze. Yeah, yeah. Said, yo, oh, that kid is good. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yo, that song is dope, man, and it's got a real southern swag. And I'm from the south. It, yeah. Most ninety nine percent of the beats that I make is like trap south. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's what. That's just where I'm. That's. It's like, you know, if I was from Nashville, Tennessee, and I played guitar, I'd probably play country. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I grew up with rap, so I I, I make trap. Um, so so just aside from the content, like the quality, right? Is there ever like, you're like, man, like, this could be a lot better mix. Oh, yeah. Or this could be a lot better. You know, oh, yeah. Well, he yeah. could have well, rapped well, this well, probably over again. And they could have. <laughs> what would you say to a CSH artist that's watching this, this uh, interview or listening? what would you tell them that maybe to do to change or something like you've seen that, that, know, that go struck to view, out to you? Go to view. That's it. Go to view. Man. <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm actually, so, so um, one thing I'm offering for CHH artists is this is also my ministry too. So this is my work into the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've worked out, you know, really good deal with, with seven of them. It's like, you know, normally I would charge $300 up for a mix and I'm doing it for half, like 150 a song. You know, so that, that I know that from what I've heard and seen, you know, not it's CHH. This isn't dope dealers. You know what I'm saying? I don't have someone with a, a 10 bands they just made this last weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go on and drop a thousand dollars right now. You know what I'm saying? I know it's not like that. So I'm willing to work with budgets as well. You know, if even if it, they, even if you ain't got 150, I'm willing to to adjust that a little bit to to That's help. It's actually really good because out here in Cali, most of the biggest studios they charge about one fifty one fifty to two fifty per hour. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bro, like yeah. I'm telling you, like I've I've done songs for like five hundred up as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. This yeah. Is, this is That's where good. I know I know that from most of the CHH artists I work with, including uh, Hog Mob. You know, most of the the brothers I met there, you know, that have become my family, like. We all got jobs. They all got jobs. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to, everybody's got kids, you know what I'm saying? And then most of most Christians, I mean, you're, if you're living the life, right. You know, you got a wife, probably kids, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, right. That is, it's not life ain't easy. And especially with everything crazy, like, you know, I'm working to put in the uh, work to the kingdom. That's, that's my, my ministry. So, nice. but as far as like, what could they do? I would say, you know, if you're wanting quality, like invest in yourself, you know what I'm saying? Um, make that, I mean, I invested in myself, you right, know, right, right. this is not <laughs> equipment. So and don't, don't, don't be rapping on your, on your, on your voice notes. Yeah. yeah no, no. What you mean? Kanye did that though. They worked for Kanye. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> even the, the Christian album that Kanye put out, like I was now, I was like, yo, the quality is Awful, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh man, they go the listeners. <laughs> nah, nah, I was just joking. <laughs> I actually, I, 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 I love that album at that time. You know what I'm saying? I was that. Was, I was actually excited about that because I seen the transition. I seen some. I seen God working. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of the 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 naysayers and all that, and the right. fact that definitely kind of slipping. You know, he's kind of backsliding right now from what it looks like um, with some of the people he's working with, but. You know, I've seen some of his interviews and I've seen, you know, God's really working. And to see God just slide into the industry like that and just like, mm-hmm. and, you know, cut the veil right in the industry like that. I mean, that right. was, was pretty powerful. Yeah. Quality yeah. One yeah. On God that. was trending, right? Yeah. Trending God. On Twitter and YouTube. Yeah, man. Um, was, that so was, what, what's that? That's the hog mob sign in the back? Oh, so seven, yeah. Seven forgot to take that with him when they left the session. So I bought <laughs> It's yours now. Well, <laughs> oh, that's Illuminati. <laughs> that's, that's community property now. 
thing is like, you know, I've, I've watched the YouTube comments. I'm like, you know, on, on the, the songs, I'm going to see what people say. Cause I'm, I'm working on it. You know, this is my, some of my work too. Right. Yeah. Oh, what's with the bathroom man? This and that. I'm like, Oh God, I knew that was coming. You know what I'm saying? Because I said the same thing when I first seen Hog. I'm like, yo, what are they doing? You know? But, but then I see, you know, they're doing that. And I remember being raised, my grandma always saying, you know, this is, I love you. That's I love you in sign language, you know? Right. right. Uh, so, I mean, it's not surprising that people are going to come at it. I mean, that's what happens with everything in the world. Yeah. Everything, read, everything gets interpreted. Yeah. Everybody's got opinion and everybody's looking for something to hate on. And uh, I know the hearts of Hall Mob. I know the hearts of all them dudes. And boy, they right. are fire for Christ. And, right. And, um, the, the one thing I love about right, speak on that because a lot of people are, uh, they won't listen to hog mob because of some of the language, right? Some of the strong language that they put right, in music, right. um, or reconcile. So like, what has been in your experience with these brothers? Like that you can say, yo, you know, regardless of maybe what you hear or, or whatever opinion they got on, on certain words or usage of words, you, you still feel like, you know. This is cool, man. This is this yeah. is the best work we got. So that's pretty funny because me and Diamond, you know, we're white, you know what I'm saying? And and we we <laughs> the, the music we hear, you know, we hear seven say the N-word, you know what I'm saying? And then <laughs> you know, like and I'm like, you know, me, I, I don't personally care, but our conversation me and Diamond had was like, yo, you know, like I me, for instance, me DJing at Top Golf. Okay. At Top Golf, I can't play any music that has the N-word in it. Right. Mm. But I'll drop some Brian T. You know, I'll drop some Hurt. I'll drop right. some artists that I've been listening to at Top Golf. You know what I'm saying? Wow, like, nice. Playing the uh, the Brian T. Um, uh, who told you gangsters go to heaven? You know what I'm saying? That's right, right. I know. I see. I see thugs there, and I know that they're hearing it. I'll crank it up, but I have to be careful playing seven. You know, <laughs> 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 where it comes out, I I can't play it. You know, so I, right. I'll. Times I'll sit there. I'm like, man, I really want to play one of seven songs, and I'll have to listen to it. Let me make sure I listen to his verse. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so me and Diamond had to talk about that because we're like, you know, man, that kind of sucks because not Diamond was getting involved with Hog Mob. He's part of Hog Mob now, and and he's just like, you know, before he had talked to Seven about it, he was just like, we talked about it. It's like, you know, I probably they probably could I probably couldn't play his songs for some of the, like the church I go to. You know, what I'm saying they might feel a certain type of way because they're. Right. The, white people and they're probably whoa you know what is it and and already rap you know rap music um for instance i'm halloween i'm outside building sound panels in my garage and uh i got the garage up i'm playing uh you know christian hip-hop and i see some families like some kids start walking my driveway no 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 the mom grabs them no keep going yeah right they hear rap and so um but anyways with with the language and everything um the thing about hog mob is you know for people who don't know them, a lot of them are um, ex gangsters, you know what I'm saying? Ex gang members, um, been to prison, you know, um, for anything and everything, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so they're, all of them are passionate about reaching prisoners, reaching gang members, um, reaching people in the streets. That's their passion, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. The streets. Um, their, their passion is not to hit white suburbia, you know. Mm-hmm get a uh, uh, um, Baptist church. You know what I'm saying? Even though Zion, he's a Baptist preacher, right. you know, and at a, at a Baptist church in Georgia, um, their, their main goal is to hit the streets and, and that's where they come from. And I, I feel that. And, and um, I love it because I grew up in the streets and I grew up with gang members and, um, you know, thugs. And that was like my, that's, that's who I always loved. And then the people, my friends, you know what I'm saying? Especially right. in the music industry. So, um, so to see hard. people on fire for God like that is just even more encouraging. Yeah. And, and it's cool because, um, I remember talking to my preacher one time, uh, back, back in the day, I was talking to him about smoking marijuana. You know, I, I don't smoke anymore. I quit smoking three years ago, but I'd, I was like, no, pastor, what's wrong with smoking marijuana? You know, he's like, oh, you know, this and that, this and that. And, uh, he's like, you know, one thing I like about you, Sean, he's like, um, you're going to be able to reach people I can't reach. He's like, you, with the people that you're around, he's like, I could never go talk to them about Jesus. He's like, but you can cause, mm-hmm. cause you're friends with them. He's like, but they're going to look at me like I'm some crazy old white guy, you know? Mm-hmm. And so that always resonated with me. 
And so then when I see like hog mob and that's mm-hmm. kind of the same thing, they're going to be able to reach people that some old white preacher ain't going to be able to reach. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're uh, uh, David Wilkerson. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not gonna, and not, let's not say gonna cause they are right. Cause yeah, yeah I, I seen, I seen, um, cause I'm cool with, I'm cool with skill. Right. And he's always sharing videos and stuff like that. And like they really in the streets, like they're in the middle of the projects, oh, yeah, making hamburgers, <laughs> like barbecuing and a live show and everything, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like handing out Bibles and the whole nine, you know. Yeah. So they, they definitely like the heart of ministry, um, is is definitely you know prevalent in Hog Mob, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, they definitely about the streets, yeah. And they could do that, Dante, like said. Dante has said that they're building, I guess they have this house that they're building. Yeah, Dante's been, uh, they built this house and they're filling it up. They're going to be doing a, a whole men's ministry where they're going to be bringing, you know, recovery and everything like that. And yeah, man. The Dante, house is ill. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. house is ill. Like, but he's trying to renovate it, right? Yeah, it's what he's been renovating and everything. Mm-hmm. They're filling it up now um, with uh, the furniture and everything. Dante, I don't know how much y'all know about him, man, but, you know, he has a crazy cool story about prison ministry. Um, he has this dope prison. He started doing prison ministry with um, with a prison fellowship to where he started going to prisons, kind of, you know, teaching with with the prison fellowship. Well, then they they allowed him to uh, bring speakers, you know what I'm saying, and a microphone. So then he started rapping. And, and next thing you know, the the prisoners start getting involved within the prison themselves. They're like, yo, this is this is great. They reached out to Dante, like, yo, we want you back. And whether you're with uh, prison fellowship or pres- pr- prison fellowship or not, we want you here. So he right. went and invested in a bunch of sound equipment. And before COVID, you know, I know he was going uh he, he go a couple y- he go to a couple prisons in a weekend and go to each yard. And so he go to you know, first yard and he he played his music, he'd rap, but then he'd allow them to rap. And he talks, I think he talked about it in a song or, or maybe it was just me and him talking. He's saying like, that's, that's one place where he's seen where, um, all it, it just, it would break the whole, um, the whole stigma of white and black and red and blue. You know what I'm saying? Everyone's shoulder to shoulder. Mm-hmm. There, there wasn't no, no hate. That's it. It killed all the hate. He'd allow them to come give their test, you know, their story, and 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 allowed them to rap. And uh, he he was saying one time he he had a, a guy that was like a Muslim, this like big boss guy. You know what I'm saying? He sent a little minion up to him, and he's like, "Yo, my boss said, you know, he likes what you're doing. You know." And and says, so like, "Let me go talk to him." He goes talk to him, and he's like, "Look, man, he's like, you know, I I'm Muslim." He's like, "So, but I like what you're doing." He's like, "You know," he's like, "Okay." He's like, "But you know," and Dante's like, uh, well, "Let me pray with you." He's like, okay, he's like, you, you pray to your God, I'm going to pray to mine. Dante said he went, um, Lord, God in heaven, he's like, I pray you break this man free. You, you set this man free, and that was it. He says <laughs> about, about a year later, he was out in, uh, out in the streets, and they were doing like a, a little concert in the streets, like 1,500 people. This guy comes up and um, sees the hog mob sign. He's like, oh, I know hog mob, I know hog mob. And uh, I can't remember if it was uh, who it was that had seen them. Yo, know, I know the owner of Hog. I, I know the, the boss of Hog Mob. They're like, oh, seven? Yeah, he's not here. No, 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 not seven. Yeah, seven. And uh, dude goes and gets Dante. And Dante comes out. He's like, you don't remember me, do you? He's like, yeah, I remember you. He's like, bro, he's like, I'm free off of a life sentence. I wasn't supposed to get out. I gave my life. Wow. Wow. You know what I mean? And, and, and he's like, and everything changed. And uh, and Dante, when he was telling me the story, he's like, bro, he's like, I, I wasn't talking about, you know, freedom from prison. You know, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so that's a pretty cool. One. So, you know, Dante, me and him, we talk quite a bit. We, we, we built a really, really good relationship. And he's he's become one of my close friends. And uh, he's he's one of my favorite artists. Too. Um, you and, just miss, mix the song for him, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, duct tape that just came out. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh we're going to be doing a lot more work, but he, man, he's just on the, on, he's on fire. All of them are on fire, man. I can't speak enough like hog mob, man. They, 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 they are a very um, Christ minded ministry. They are a very uh, nonprofit ministry. You know, um, they, they are very uh, focused, typical and strict, very strict. You know what I'm saying? As far as, far as um, 
being biblical. They don't, they mm. don't play no games for sure. That's so, dope, man. But you're right. Yeah. You send them out there. You ain't sending a, a Christian opera singer to the hood. <laughs> hog mob, yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> and and that, I think, you know, from the stories I've heard, you know, gang members and people like they relate to that. You know, like um, I've heard stories of people like, yo, like I would have never um, heard the gospel if it wasn't for you guys. You know, I would have never thought about, you know, Christ without hearing your music and, and your ministry. Um, so that's, that's powerful. You know, um, yeah. I, I feel like there's a preacher, you know, I mean, I feel like the body of Christ, um, people get used all over the place, you know, there, whether it's, it's for white suburbia or whether it's for the hood, you know, um, we have a purpose, you know, all purpose. But yo, we appreciate you, man. We thank you for coming yeah. out, man. Yeah. Dope convo, man. Yeah. Uh, Tag, yeah. uh, throw in, I guess, you know, all the info, yeah, social, you, your yeah. social, your so Insta- Instagram, view beats, Twitter, which I don't really get on much anymore. View beats mainly on Instagram. Um, Facebook is Sean Sievert. If you can, I don't know if you can see my name up on the Skype thing mm-hmm. or the Zoom thing. Um, DJ View Beats on Facebook, um, Spotify, View Beats album called Uh, If Not Now, When. I do plan on dropping some more. I've I've got a ton of content. I just sit on, you know, and uh, oh. I definitely plan oh. on doing some more. Um, if anyone's interested in beats, let me know. I can definitely send you a catalog, and we can talk business that way too. We <laughs> might get a we might get a a, a a a view beats album with a bunch of artists collaborating, huh? Hey, that would be dope. That, yeah, let's put that in the air because I'm down for sure. <laughs> Dope, dope. Well, with that being said, we want to thank everybody for listening uh, and watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button on YouTube. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you cop your merch at shop.that's.christian.com. Uh, we're going to have that uh, Black Friday promo if it's not out already, guys. Is it? Nah, nah yeah. yeah, we're going to have it in the We're going to have it. Check out. Airs, we'll have Stay it. tuned. Stay tuned. Yeah, yeah, so. Check check out the Instagram if you're not already there. Make sure to visit our channel sponsor, Eurific. Uh, use promo code TNC uh, to get 10% off and get free shipping. So thank you again for listening. And uh, thanks for a view, for stopping by and sharing uh, his testimony and everything. And if you need anything done, make sure you go to view. I will see you next week. Peace. Peace. Peace.